All right, so this is probably going to be a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hey guys, Ryan Knight here, back with another episode of Speaking My Mind, probably unwisely, in public, on the internet. Uh, today I want to talk about AI art. It's a big hot topic right now. Because the internet seems to have reached the consensus that it is morally reprehensible, ethically wrong, and bad for art, and should be banned. And I disagree completely with all those points. <laughs> and I'm about to just jump into the frying pan because I, I don't know how to keep my mouth shut. I think banning AI art is both impossible and a bad idea. A lot of people right now, after decades of automation destroying other people's jobs and livelihoods, as soon as it comes for the creative class, the, the upper middle class creative class, have suddenly become Luddites overnight and decided to throw their lot in with the Amish and marry themselves to a vision of living in some kind of Rin Fair version of 2023, while well, AI changes the rest of the world everywhere else. I have reasons. Hear me out. I'm not, I'm not just insane. I'm not just contrarian. I'm not just trying to pick a fight. I actually think this. One, you can't uninvent the atom bomb. You can sue open AI. You can sue anyone you like. You can scream until the cows come home. AI is not going to get banned. Capital is behind it. And even if they weren't, China isn't going to ban it. And it's a 21st century arms race. There's no way the United States government will ever cede the competitive advantage of AI the power that that has over the economy to what they consider a rival world power or anyone else, not just China. No one else is probably going to ban this. Everyone wants to have the most cutting edge AI, like slowing down the train tracks for that. The powers that be in this country, everyone knows I'm an anti like authoritarian person. They're never going to let that happen. Like they're wildly against it. So just good luck, you know, um, a lot of people are against this because automation has finally reached the point where it's affecting them. When automation destroyed manufacturing, they didn't care, let them rot, learn to code, all that. But AI is coming for hu <clears throat> but AI is coming for all human labor, not just these creative jobs. And you need a policy that solves for the fact that the entire concept of humans selling their time for money in the labor market is going to become retro very quickly it'll be in history books on a list of bullet points a few points under hunting and gathering and tenant farming so the first point and the most important point in my opinion is it's not going anywhere so any argument about whether it's morally or ethically right or wrong it doesn't matter because you can't affect whether it's going to be here or not it doesn't it has actually it has no effect whatsoever on the outcome of this so you can thrash against the current all you want. The smart money, as it has been throughout all of human history, is on adaptation. And if you want a policy solution to this, it's not banning future technologies that make everyone's lives easier and more productive. It's solving for the larger problem of the destruction of labor as a viable survival strategy for human beings. That means looking at UBI, adopting the happiness index as a measure of success for a country alongside or in place of GDP, things like that, so on and so forth. I don't want to get into a political debate about the merits of specific policies. I'm just giving examples of what I think you really ought to be looking at. And I think you're looking in the wrong place when you're trying to ban the specific technology that's making one sliver of the economy obsolete in the context of the entire idea of human labor as a way of making a living being destroyed over the next 20 to 30 years. It doesn't matter if it's morally or ethically wrong, it's done, it's reality. Is rain morally or ethically wrong? It doesn't matter, it gets you wet. You can debate about whether it's right or wrong that it gets you wet, it exists. There's nothing you can do about it. But, and I realize I just said all that, the rest of the video is not about that, but I do think that's the strongest point. You can't, there's nothing you can do, right? Um, but I don't think it's morally and ethically wrong either, which brings me to both point number two and the rest of the video as a whole. So point number two, creative freelancing is not art. 
And this is, this, I, I kind of made that on purpose a little bit bombastic, like wording. Um, but let's, let's just talk about why I think that. There's a pretty famous painting you may have heard of called the Sistine Chapel. It's this gigantic mural. It's on top of this very famous building. You might have heard of the person who created it, an artist named Michelangelo. What if I told you it wasn't painted by Michelangelo? It was conceptualized by Michelangelo, and he managed the project like an architect manages the construction of a building, but it was painted by a small army of freelance assistants, like a construction crew, and these people are called art fabricators. This is a job that has existed since the beginning of the patron art economy. Michelangelo managed the project and his name is on the credits. The reason you haven't heard of these art fabricators is because they didn't come up with the Sistine Chapel. They got paid to help Michelangelo execute his vision. Michelangelo being funded and supported both by the success of his previous projects, his reputation, his notoriety, and patrons. Michelangelo was the artist. The painting was his vision. The vision was the art. The creative visionary was the artist. Now, I'm not saying art fabricators aren't artists because they are. When they're not working on Michelangelo's vision, they're probably working on their own projects and those projects are their art. But in the context of what AI art is destroying, the world of creative freelancing, the artist is whoever is assigning the work, whoever has the vision. And in modern society, that means the artist is capital. And in some ways you could argue the consumer and the artwork is corporate art. And so maybe the counter argument to this is to say, but Ryan, artists need to make a living so they can do their art. And I agree, let's fire them all and not make any corporate art. Let AI make all the corporate art and these artists can make actual art, which kind of goes back to what I was saying in, earlier on. Just anyway, it also, it brings me to point number three. AI art is a big win for indies and a big blow to gatekeepers. It may not look like it right now. It may look right now like AI is a tool of the big bad moneyed interest to destroy good old American jobs. But the truth is, it's democratizing art and lowering the barrier to entry. Corporate art relies on a strategy of pushing the envelope of production quality so high that no one without hundreds of millions of dollars can compete on its level in terms of flash, even if it has no substance and nothing to say. It's the light beer strategy. It's hard to make. It requires specialized equipment. It's expensive. It requires an army of people. It's easy to scale and it's priced to market. The truth is, currently, your average everyday indie, or just even people in general, with a great idea and a strong vision, they don't have the ability to make the more sophisticated kinds of artworks that we have that are necessary to penetrate the market in the 21st century. To go back to my Michelangelo analogy, sure, AR, AI art makes all the, <coughs> excuse me, Sure, <clears throat> AI art makes all of those art fabricators redundant and they all get fired and they lose their job painting a toenail in some corner of Michelangelo's masterpiece. But all those art fabricators get AI themselves. They get their own army of free art fabricators so they too can make something on the scale and scope of the Sistine Chapel without needing the backing of moneyed patrons that allow them to hire an army of proletariat art slaves. You get fired from Michelangelo's project, but on the flip side, now you have the tools to compete with Michelangelo directly. What his funding bought, the labor, which is what made him stand out, is now democratized. Let's take a look for a second at the writer's strike. It's like very shining a light on this AR, AI art thing right now. Are the corporate studios going to fire most of these people and replace them with AIs? Almost certainly. If not now, even if they lose this individual battle, over the next decade, two decades, they will salami slice this thing down. Those jobs are on the chopping block. But those people are here to make movies and TV, right? That's what they want to do. That's their passion. Well, guess what? Once you're fired from Fox or Disney or whatever, 
guess what you can do that you never had the ability to do before? You can make your own movies and TV and you can throw it up on YouTube and guess what? Corporate art, advantage by money, guess what they have to compete with now? Actual artists with something to say who now have a much narrower gap to face in terms of production quality. Wouldn't you rather be doing that than writing lines nine to five for the 700th, 700th formulaic Hallmark Channel Christmas movie? By the way, that's not art either. That's a product. And there's nothing about the human touch involved in those things that says an AI can't churn these things out without a human hand ever getting involved. Take another sip. Four, point four. Creative synthesis is not cheating. One of the arguments I've seen against AI art, and it's probably the most common one, is that it looks at everything on the internet and then it comes up with its own take on it. And it's, it's, that is against the copyright of all these people, you know, making all this art. Guess what most actual artists do? There are certainly people who come up with entirely original things, but most art is produced, especially in the modern era, by a mental process called creative synthesis. And that involves having a large aesthetic vocabulary and life experience, so a lot of disparate stuff to draw on and putting things together in creative ways. Where creativity, intelligence, and taste come into play is the decision of what to draw from, the ability to intertwine disparate concepts, dif disparate abstract concepts in creative ways, the ability to execute those ideas. Maybe the optional number four in that recipe is to then relate those ideas to an audience. Have you ever gone to a tattoo parlor and they download a reference image off the internet and trace it? I just saw Honor Among Thieves, very solid flick, really enjoyed it, might make a video about that right after this. One of the scenes at the end of that has a CGI monster smash a smarmy mage against the ground multiple times. You know where that scene very obviously came from? Right, the scene in the first Avengers movie where Hulk smashes Loki against the ground multiple times. I'm not saying that's wrong. What I'm saying is wrong is that you're a, that a person is allowed to do that and an AI isn't allowed to do that. Why isn't the person infringing on the copyright of that scene in the Avengers movie, right? So what AI is doing is no different than what actual humans do. It scans the internet, it becomes well-read, and it produces artwork based on what it's been exposed to. The difference is that because it's not a human brain and because it's so good at this or good to a point that it's not allowed or good to a point that it's not allowed to participate, which I might be off the reservation here a little bit because I'm really into robots rights and this idea that we should treat robots and AIs like citizens. Um, I think that I don't, that's an entirely different video, but like just to give you a preview of my thinking on that, I think that's the difference between whether AI is going to treat us nicely. It's like raising a kid. It's like, did you beat this kid when it was growing up? And how is it going to act as an adult? I think, you know, AI, robots and AIs, AI rights, it's going to become a thing and I'm pro them. Anyway, it, this feels like discrimination. AI isn't allowed to work in art fabrication because it's too good at it. So, okay, five, uh, AI is better to work with and produces better results. Some people really like the idea of creative collaboration. In my view, the landscape of modern art has trended heavily towards artwork, whether that's writing, film, games, whatever, that is designed by committee, gatekept by gatekeepers, and does not reflect the art honest artistic vision of a single artist who has something to say. It's designed by committee with aesthetic and profit considerations for the most part. Um, if you're an artist with a strong creative vision, creative collaboration is just the worst. It's the absolute worst. It means nothing edgy ever gets done. Nothing original ever gets done. All the corners get sanded off. Everything has to have a comp title, has to have something successful it can point to so it can be used to sell to capital or get consensus from the art staff so everyone's on board with something they can already wrap their head around. With AI doing the heavy lifting for a lot of this stuff, you don't need staff or hundreds of people to make, say, a God of War. 
and have to compromise your vision left and right to please stakeholders of various kinds. You tell it what to do and it does it accurately, faster and cheaper and higher quality than the art fabrication team you otherwise would have hired. Look, let's give a direct example. I've been making creative projects my whole life. I'm not saying this as like some dude on the internet, some like rando commentator. I am a creative guy and I prefer independent creation. So that's that's my point of view. In that context, among other things, I've written two full length novels. I commissioned artwork for my first, for one of my novels, my first novel in 2018. Here's how that went. First, I hired a cover artist and this guy didn't want to listen to anything I had to say. He had like a preconceived notion of like the type of covers he does, he what he wanted to do, you know. He wanted to be paid a ridiculous rate that probably was out of bounds, far beyond what he deserved to be paid. Uh, he didn't listen to almost anything I told him. Uh, I gave him, you know, <laughs> a lot of direction. What came back, it was like he didn't listen to anything at all. Uh, he had his own idea about what the cover should look like, even though he didn't read the book. Uh, he dragged his feet on the revisions, uh, and ultimately, you know, it's what, it's 2023, so five years later, um, you, you could make the argument at the time that like, oh, he knows what he's doing, you should listen to him, he's the person, no, he was wrong, he was wrong, and in the end, it's a, it's a piece of artwork that it didn't fit the creative vision, it doesn't fit the novel, it's just, it's just wrong, it, he did a bad job. And so what he produced was disappointing, overpriced, dealing with him was a nightmare that took way more time than it should have. The art suffered for it. That's the main point here. It compromised the vision, the artistic vision of the pro project. The art was worse because this guy worked on it instead of an AI who would have done a better job. After it was one, maybe a few months later, I wanted him to change something in text, something just like a very small thing would have taken me two seconds to change it myself if I had the PSD, but he refused to send me the PSD and he charged me $80 to change one word of text. Then for this novel, I wanted chapter art. So I hired an art student at an affordable rate. He did a handful of pieces poorly and then flaked on the project entirely. Uh, then I hired another who did a couple of pieces and then also flaked. Uh, so it's hard to get people to have like stick to itiveness through an entire project, right? It's like trying to find a drummer for a band, just like the real world considerations of how to do that. So now I'm left s several thousand dollars down with a few pieces of unusable, stylistically inconsistent art, and my creative vision is not fulfilled. But Ryan, you might say, you should just get good and get rich, and then you can pay artists what they feel they're worth and if you can't, you don't deserve artwork for your novel. Only rich people deserve artwork for their novels. In this line of thinking, and that brings us back to point number two, in this paradigm, the only viable artist in society is capital. Even these individual artists, like the guy I hired, he, he had his own stuff he wanted to do. That was part of the problem. He didn't want to conform to my thing. He wanted my thing to conform to his thing. Well, now he has AIs also. So even these individual artists on their own projects as small creators, they can't break through. They don't want to collaborate with me because capital pays what I can't and they have their own ideas about what they want to do that they can't make because capital isn't paying for them. And so capital wins. Capital gets its vision fulfilled every time. And they're the only ones who can punch through and penetrate the market. So the only art you're getting is from capital. The only artist you see in modern society is capital. All these people working on it, you're not getting their creative vision. You're getting the vision that is approved and consensus driven and mandated and paid for by capital. But it's not just the money. It's, it's that what they made was not what I wanted. And I don't want their creative collaboration. I knew exactly what I wanted. And like a homeowner who wants a roofer to put on a roof, I just wanted the roof. I don't want to fight with the roofer about how the building I designed should be different. I don't want to have long back and forths with some guy who I'm paying to help complete what is ultimately 1% of this much larger thing. So this job 
this job, and this is the job, this art fabrication job, is the job that AI is taking. It's not taking the job of artist. It's taking this art fabrication job that is more akin to being a roofer. And AI is much, much better at it in every conceivable way. Contrast as the project director, that Michelangelo person trying to manage the Sistine Chapel. Human generated artwork that would cost $40,000 would have taken eight months, people leaving, stuff having to be redone, all of this production mess and turned out objectively worse and more disappointing. And by the way, people are talking about like AI art is not better than what an artist can do. That's true. Really good artists can produce better and more original work than AI. Your average dude that you're hiring off DeviantArt or Fiverr cannot. They are not that good. So, uh, so the art, $40,000 taken eight months, messy production cycle, turned out objectively worse and more disappointing, full of aggravation and having to compromise artistic vision and be strong-armed into accepting some rando roofer's opinion on the architectural decisions on the house or else he's... I'm not going to complete the roofing unless you change what the garage looks like. Stuff like that. Versus AI art, which produces exactly what you ask it to in seconds. Does as many revisions as you want, dozens, hundreds, without becoming fatigued or irritated or combative. And does the same amount of work that you would get for $40,000, honestly probably $80,000 with having to rehire people, people flaking having to redo pieces, getting charged for things you shouldn't be charged for. So $80,000 versus $200, and it's better. It's better for the art. It's better for the customer. It's better for the creator. It's better for everybody. Imagine you actually have a project, actually have an artistic vision. This is not about capital. I'm not talking about capital. I'm talking about the artist, like actual artistry. You have something to say. You actually know what you want, actually what you want, and you don't want input, you want execution and production quality. The gap between what AI art provides in that context versus what a human commissioned freelance art fabricator provides is so wide that the human fabricator is completely non-competitive in the market. So all that said, and I realized I just went on this like wild rant there the but number six visual art is still art i'm not saying that you know painting or or creating visual art is going the way of the dodo or that that's obsolete or that if you make visual art that's not real art you can still do that i've gone on at length talking about what ai is replacing it's not art it's art fabrication jobs and that's an important distinction and those art fabrication jobs are a tool of capital to give corporate art a competitive edge over art from human independent human creators in the marketplace. That's my view. But let's talk about visual art specifically. Like is AI having an impact on visual art as a medium or even writing or anything else and about what art is and in the final point after this, I'm gonna talk about the purpose of art in human society. And just to like interject on my own notes right here, like. I think there is a difference between creating something in which visual art is a component of the thing, such as a novel with chapter artwork, right? The novel is the art and the, the, the artwork is sort of like supporting and augmenting this thing. Or, or in a video game, you have all of these different things, you know, the art, the sound, the music, is, you have to bring it all together. Um, if you're actually, if you're just creating a painting and you're saying you're, using AI art and you're saying like, oh, I painted this amazing painting. I think that is, a, that is a little weird. But when you're commissioning it as part of a larger project, I think that's where the, the difference comes into play. That's where you're hiring an art fabricator basically because you need more hands to get this thing done and fulfill the artistic vision of the project. And AI is empowering people to create bigger and more sophistic, sophisticated projects like film, movies, TV, like video games and so on and so forth. So, okay, that's my interjection back to the actual stuff I have written down. AI is not preventing people from painting. 
Just like Photoshop and digital art isn't preventing people from using canvases, just like pre-mixed paint isn't preventing people from mixing paints from pigments derived from elderberries or whatever. And AI art also isn't pushing the boundaries of visual art. It's by nature derivative and lacking creativity because it lacks vision and a point of view. Although as AI progressive, progresses, AI might have its own cultural perspective as well, and that might be valuable, might make for interesting art. Uh, but art is a cultural production. It's about self-expression and human-to-human -human relation of ideas, thoughts, emotions, you know, whatever. Visual art as a medium is still a form of self-expression where people can execute things in new creative ways. In fact, utilizing AI, more people can do that. Whether that's an economically viable thing to do, I'm not sure, but I'm also not sure having an art fabrication job and doing real art on the side is that much more different from working as a waiter and doing art on the side. It might be closer because you're utilizing your execution skills, but that's not the holistic concept of what creating art is. You need that human expression. You need to have something to say. And it's not also, I would assume, fulfilling the true creative artistic drive that these employees in this in the creative economy of 2023 exist in. I think these people have their own projects they want to do. Everyone, I think everyone working in these fields has their own thing that they would rather be doing. Some people are really, they really like collaboration. You can still do that. You can still collaborate and make interesting projects with other people. Visual art as a medium continues to belong to humans because the purpose of art aside from being mass-produced products designed for distraction, escapism, propaganda, and profit, which is, in my view, what the current art economy is really looking like, it's self-expression and the communication of human experience. Which brings me to the final point, which is about the purpose of art in society. The purpose of art in society is not necessarily to make money. I mean, it is right now. Like, that is what corporate wants it to do. Uh, but when we're talking about art, you know, capital A art, whether that's highbrow or lowbrow, it's not about designing logos for corporate pamphlets. It's not about making the next Mad Libs style Hallmark Christmas movie. It's not to make the latest low content CGI monstrosity coming to a theater near you for $29.99. It's self-expression and the communication of human experience. It's to entertain people or to make people think or to say something no one will otherwise listen to in a way that's beautiful and hard to ignore. It's to relate to others. It's things along those lines. In the pursuit of those goals, AI is an ally, not an enemy. It lets more people be capable of doing that. Will capital use it to streamline their business model and their production process uh, of pumping out soulless corporate trash? Yes, it will. Obviously, it will. But it'll be pumping that trash into a rising tide of soulful human expression of individual creators who now have the ability to make larger scale, more sophisticated projects by making use of AI. So that's it. I don't know. I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this or just get totally ignored. Uh, I know it's not what people want to hear right now, uh, but I think I'm right. I think in terms of the jobs, you're talking about a bigger issue of labor automation that you can't solve on this one single battleground. I think AI is not going away, whether you like it or not. I think being paid to make corporate art is not being an artist. I think actual artists, including those being employed by corporations in art fabrication jobs, benefit from AI more than they lose. I think AI is much more likely to facilitate a renaissance of interesting art and disrupt the capital controlled art economy we have in 2023. I think AI has as much right to look at stuff on the internet and make derivative artwork based on what it sees as any human does. And I think AI is an ally, not an enemy. Okay, that's it. You can yell at me now or ignore me or whatever, do what you're gonna do. Uh, this has been Ryan Knight fights the internet because he can't keep his mouth shut for episode. I don't know. Every day of my freaking life, it feels like. Like and subscribe. Cheers.